semi-professional kind of sport, isn't it? Yes, a number of our drivers, in fact, uh, one of uh, our people who was racing on Sunday uh, became the first professional driver. They find that although they start the sport by doing it just for the love of the thing, when they do win money, which is comparatively more than on other uh, production saloon events, they think, well, I'll spend a bit more money on the car and I'll win some more prize money. And usually they can, on a good season, a man can win as much as a £1,000. How many laps do they have to do? Well, they have to do 100 laps, uh, which is a very long race for uh, a short circuit because there's a lot of stress on the cars. We do insist on infield pit stops, which makes it a, uh, an extra, for an extra bit of excitement. They have to come in for a compulsory count of five. Uh, they race over 100 laps, and the winner of the cha championship gets the various accolades that are going, the trophies, and uh, about £100 in prize money, too. What speeds do they knock up? Well, going into the bend uh, over the past two seasons, uh, a man can, in third gear, be going as fast as 80 miles an hour. So they really get cracking, aren't Oh, yes. Yeah. What kind of a crowd is it at track? Well, at this particular meeting, if the weather's good and uh, track conditions are okay, we should expect something in the region of about 20,000 people. And roughly how many drivers will be performing? Uh, about 60. The 60 are the best in the country, in fact. So there's going to be a lot of excitement. Oh, yes. Oh, the old maestro himself, Terry Hayward. How's it going, Terry? Very well at the moment, very well indeed. You've specially constructed this car for this event, haven't you? <laughs> yes, it's taken me about 10 days, 17 hours a day to get it ready. I've been away from the sport for quite a bit, but I'm very satisfied with today's performance. How much did it cost you to put it together? Total, around about £500. It's a lot of money, but then uh, you've got big things in the offing. You're not the reigning champion, but you were the two previous years, weren't you? Yes, I won the championship twice so far. I missed out on last year's uh, small fault. This year I'm hoping to win it again. You were the, the first hot, dr hot rod driver to become a pro, weren't you? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. And you've been, uh, have you been earning a living out of it, or is it just break even? Well, just about breaking even, actually. Um, the only advantage, really, from being a professional is that um, providing the card is going right, uh, you can stay in bed till 11 o'clock in the morning, and, <laughs> and if it's running wrong, well, then you do all like I did this weekend, 17 hours a day. Yeah. How do you feel about your chances in the tests in South Africa? Uh, I think this year we're going to have a very good chance. How fast do you go in these cars during a race? A reach speed approaching the corners about 90 miles per hour. Is it a dangerous sport? It sounds it with how many cars? Four cars in the test match going around the track? It's not very dangerous. The only time it really is is when you get 20 cars, 24 cars, like a normal race. We're in the test series with four cars. What would you say are the main qualities that a good hot rod racer needs? Concentration, driving ability, you know, well-prepared car. Tomorrow's your big day. What do you reckon the chances are? Well, there's 32 cars in the race. They're the top 32 from the world. Um, it all really depends on the grid position. Mm. Um, they draw the grid position out of a hat. Uh, if you draw number 32 on the grid and you've got some fast men at the front, you, you haven't got much hope. But if you, I think if I draw in the first 10, I'm in with a chance. I think, you know, it's 75 laps, so you've uh, sort of got to keep cool about it all through the race, you know, and not give an inch and just keep on going, you know, as Gordon says, if you get drawn at the front, you okay. just keep at it because in 75 laps anything can happen, you know. These cars look like wrecks, but in fact you spend an enormous amount of money oh, on them, yeah, don't they? Yeah, well, you know, um, I've just built this car just for tomorrow, you know, and I've spent sort of, you know, how many hours over the last two weeks on it and everyone else the same, you know, I mean, people think it's... Uh, sort of a rough sort of stock car type of racing, but the hours that go into it, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Your engine, what do your engine cost you on there? 
more like you cost anything, you know, from sort of a competitive engine would be about 1,500 pound up to, you know, 2,000 pound, you know. Yeah, they're not problem. bangers, are they? Oh, no. Well, Gordon's just fitted a new engine, mm -hmm. okay. right. What do you spend on yours? Well, uh, if my wife's watching, I wouldn't like to say, <laughs> but uh, they're not, it's not a cheap sport. It's very difficult for the public at large, I think, to accept that this is a sport, really. Yes, I think they've still got the old attitude that it's an old MOT failed car uh, thrown together and raced around an old mud track, which is what it was in the early days, of course. But now it's, it's not like that at all. We've got what are racing cars uh, that the, the boys usually buy brand new Ford body shells or whatever make of car they're using and build it up as a racing car from that. How would you compare this on this circuit with um, saloon car racing, for instance, on somewhere like Silverstone? Well, it's, it is totally different. Of course, from a spectator's point of view, on a track like this, they can see all of the race all of the time, so it's beneficial to them, and it, it is a sport for spectators. The giants of hot rod racing are Midland men. Trevor Shaw from Daventry is in the garage business. John Edwards, another garage owner, comes from Wolverhampton. And of course there's Gordon Bland, the world champion and an insurance broker who lives in Coventry. The machines they all drive are Ford Escorts. That's become the norm for hot rods. And with the 183 brake horsepower engines costing £3,000, it's an expensive business. On Sunday, these lads will average 60 on the quarter-mile circuit and will reach 80 down the straight. And John Bland can expect fierce competition from the drivers he beat only six days ago in the World Championships at Ipswich. Well, there's going to be a lot of competition this week. We've got all the, well, quite a lot of the continental drivers over here, all the tough ones in particular. And as well as that, from our point of view, here in the Midlands, we've got the, the top London drivers as well. We shall have uh, Barry Lee, uh, Mick Collard, all the top drivers will be here on Sunday at Hensford. And all looking for your scalp? Yes, I think after last weekend, uh, they'll all be after me, I'll be the man that they want to scalp. As you can see now, we're making our way through the traffic. It's a purely different technique to normal racing. You have to get in very close. Of course, occasionally, you do, do a bit of bumping and boring. Just, we've got, uh, well, we've wound, nearly wound Trevor Shaw out there, but he got in the way a little bit. You're not actually supposed to do that. And he's having a go at us now, but uh, we managed to get through all right. And uh, we've got through that bunch. Trevor Shaw will be among the main contenders on Sunday, but because he is one of the best, he'll start the race at the back of the bunch. When you're a novice, you start at the front, and uh, opposite to circuit race, and the better you get, the further you go back, which is really fair, in the sense of, you know, if you had the fastest man at the front starting in every race, I mean, you know, it's just pointless really, just walk away with it. Well, no. this should do, anyway. What about technique? Because I know for a fact when I went round for my spin, you're stuck in third gear. There's no gear changing. You're just clouting the pedal and steering hard into bends. Is it as simple as that? Well, no. It's obviously, there's a lot more to it. It's a lot of steering control. I mean, traffic's got a lot to do with it, you know. Um, plus, the slower chaps on the track also can help you quite a bit. I mean, you can box 
faster men in behind a, a slower paced car and uh, use them to your advantage. Now what about the, um, the, the business of technique on the track, uh, Gordon? Do you, do you actually uh, ever become slightly illegal in inverted commas? Well, on a quarter mile circuit with 30 cars, contact is all, it's almost impossible to avoid contact. Occasionally you, um, you come up behind someone and you know that they don't know you're there. You just give him a tap on the back end just to let him know you're there. Uh, it's illegal, contact is illegal, but uh, if you give someone a tap just to let him know you're there, they don't worry too much about that. It's when you move over. Yeah, that's it, that's exactly what it is. It's when you start pushing them into the fence or spinning them off that uh, they wave the black flag at you. Why do you do it? Just, just enjoy it, it just gets in your blood and it, it, you can't explain it really, it just gets into your blood and that's it.